A pencil of height 2 cm is kept upright 5 cm away from a convex mirror of radius of curvature 20 cm. Find the position, height and nature of its image. The first thing we'll do is make a drawing of this situation. So it'd be a great idea to pause the video and see if you can first draw this whole situation yourself. All right, let's do that. We have a convex mirror. So let's say here is our convex mirror, which has the radius of curvature of 20 centimeters. So this distance, so let's write that over here. This distance, the radius is 20 centimeters. In our mirror formula, remember we need the focal length. And one thing to remember is that the principal focus is right in between, exactly in between the center of curvature and the pole. And therefore, if this is 20, our focal length must be 10 centimeters. That's the first thing we can gather from this. All right, then we know that the pencil of height two centimeters kept five centimeters away from the convex mirror. So the pencil must be kept somewhere over here. Its height is two centimeters. We'll put the height later and it's kept five centimeters away. So this is five centimeters. So we know the object distance. We know the focal length. We have to calculate the image distance or the position of the image. So the first step is to write down the mirror formula. Remember the mirror formula, one over F is one over V plus one over U. But this formula is sign sensitive. So the next step would be to understand what are the signs and what we do for that, we're gonna treat this as a graph sheet. Uh, we're gonna treat that this is on a graph sheet. We're gonna call the pole as our origin. We'll choose the incident direction to be horizontal, uh, positive. We'll choose the incident direction to be positive. And the incident direction is towards the left because the object is here, the mirror is over here. So the left side is positive. Therefore, all the positions to the left side of the pole of the origin are positive positions. And all the positions to the right side of the pole are negative positions. That's the first step. Now that we have this, we can substitute over here and we can solve. Now again, it'd be a great idea to pause the video, see if you can substitute and get the value of V. All right, let's do that. So one over F, F is 10 centimeters. That's the position of the principal focus, but that's positive. So we're just gonna put positive over here. One over V, we don't know what the position of the image is. We're gonna just keep it as it is plus one over u. u is the position of the object. All well, the objects are on the negative side, so that position is going to be negative position, so minus five. And so all we have to do now is solve this. We can write this minus sign over here, because plus times minus is minus. And now to calculate v, we'll just add one over phi on both sides. That'll give us one over v equals, what will that be equal to? One over 10, plus one over five, plus one over five. We can solve this now. If you take the common denominator, we get 50. No, we can, we can take 10 as the common denominator, LCM. So you get one plus two, one plus two, which is three. Let's just write that down over here. And one over V is three over 10, therefore V, you can figure that out, write that over here itself, V, is 10 or three. And there we have it, that's our answer. That's the image position. Now, we need to interpret this result carefully. What does it mean that we have a positive value for V? The positive value is telling us that it's on this side of the mirror. So our answer is going to be 10 over three is what? About 3.33, right? So that's going to be somewhere over here. Because it's positive, we now understand this is the position of the image. Okay, the next step would be to calculate the height of the image. Well, the height of the object is given to us as two centimeters. Let me just write that down over here first. This is two centimeters. And therefore, the height of the image, we can now figure out using the magnification formula. Let's just make some room. All right. The magnification formula is the height of the image, height of the image divided by the height of the object is going to be negative V, negative V divided by U. So we can again substitute, and again, great idea to pause the video and see if you can substitute and get, it, get the answer yourself. All right, let's do this. 
Now, even for heights, remember, the sign convention is above the principal axis, the height is positive. Below the principal axis, the height is negative, all right? So, the height of the image, I don't know, so I'm just gonna keep it as it is. Height of the object. Well, object is above the principal axis. I don't care where the object is. For the height, all that matters is above the principal axis, and therefore, it's positive two centimeters. So, it's gonna be positive. That'll be equal to minus v, well we already found what v is, v is 10 over three, divided by u, well what's u? u is negative five, we know that, right? Because u is the object position, that's negative side, so that's negative five. All right, so we just have to solve this. Let's see, the negatives cancel, five goes one times, five goes two times, so you get two over three, and we can multiply the whole equation by two, and so we'll get hi equals, we multiply by two, you get four over three. And that's our answer, four over three. Again, we need to interpret this carefully. We got the height to be positive. That means, we already know the image is over here, that means the, uh, the height is going to be above the principal axis. All right, and notice the value is four over three. What's four over three? It's one point three something, right, 1.33. That means it's smaller than the object, and therefore we can pretty much now draw this. It's gonna be like this because it's positive, and that's four over three. And the one last thing we need to know is the nature of this image. Well, if it's act, it has to be virtual. That's the one thing we can remember. So it's a virtual image. If it was inverted, it would have been a real image. So this is a virtual, virtual image. And so there we have it, we have found everything that we wanted. Now of course we could stop over here, but one last thing I usually love to do over here is draw a ray diagram and just make sure that everything is right. I mean it's very easy to you know get some signs wrong and get some horrible answers over here. So just to make sure we are on the right path, we'll just m quickly make a ray drawing, ray, a ray diagram. So if you were to do ray diagrams over here, one ray of light will shoot straight parallel to the principal axis, and this will appear to diverge away from the principal focus. So just a rough drawing will do, and see what we get. So that ray, will light, ray of light will go like this. Another ray of light we can shoot right at the pole. Oops, I always like to shoot right at the pole. And that ray of light after reflection will go somewhat like this. And now, these two rays well, they are diverging away. That means we'll never get a real image, so it makes sense. We're getting a virtual image, that's correct. And if you put a giant eye over here, these two rays appear to be coming from somewhere over here. So guess what, we got everything right. So we got it to be virtual. We also found that the image has to be on this side. So the ray diagram confirms that whatever we got is pretty much true. So it's always great to find the answer and also then do a ray diagram to quickly check whether whatever we've gotten is right or wrong.